Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Hope you guys are going well. I just wanted to bring up one thing. Bro, can you do a video on the best Sejuani deck from Thunder Maniac? I sure can. Let's go have a look. So this is going to be arguably probably like one of the best archetypes at the moment in terms of playing Sejuani. And this is going to be a specific list that I thought would be the most interesting to share right now. But I'm going to also leave a link to two different uh, deck codes you can go try out, whichever one you want. So basically, if you haven't seen Tempo Sejuani yet, it's been popping lately. It's basically a deck revolved around Sejuani and your misfortune and playing for the tempo, playing for the board and just beating down your opponent. Now, I really want to share this list in particular, which I got uh, the idea from Swim on his most recent uh, meta update. And that is his personal list which basically is not running black market merchant or pilfered goods this deck is exactly just looking to take over the board and play a very bannerman styled game plan without a doubt i would say this is arguably probably the one of the ones i would recommend right now because it's consistent because we're not running the black market merchant and pilfered goods package we're purely focused on the tempo and it's a very linear strategy that is easy to uh, pilot and i would highly recommend it but i will leave a link to a black market merchant list as well if you you know if you have a boner for pilfering people then <laughs> you can give that one a go both are pretty good i'm trying out this one because i personally think that it's gonna be better for ladder right now so Without a doubt, Sejuani is your build around card, I guess you could say, but uh, you, you can just play for the board. It's like, everything just feels right. Uh, Fury of the North is low key, by the way, just becoming more and more powerful. This card's been having a boner, a lot of free old decks, but yeah, from top to bottom, let's have a quick look. Riptide Rex is an incredible finisher for any deck that runs any form of warning shot or just general being able to damage your opponent as well. It's like make it rain, okay? So T-Rex uh, is literally gonna be your game finisher if it gets late enough. Uh, three Sejuani, this is your mid-range threat that can end games. One copy of Citrus Courier is completely clutch at times and it's always a well-fitted card in most uh, bilge water lists. I'd say having a single copy of this, maybe two, is just really incredible. I can't count the amount of times you you win the game off of this. It's crazy, it's really crazy. Racing Scale Hunter is becoming quite a niche pick. I'm really liking the flavor of this. It really comes in clutch, espe clutch especially if you manage to hit an Omen Hawk buff. On a card like that, it's a bit of a backbreaker. So really good card, a bit of a skill tester, all these vulnerable packages. We do feature as well the hired gun for the vulnerable package. Really cool, really cool. Like one of the things you can do in, a lot, in certain matchups where your opponent is the aggressor and you're on turn two, uh, is you can pass back to them and they will often play a unit and you can actually grant it vulnerable. Well, that's a very rare uh, bluff niche that I think is really cool though. It helps against aggressive decks because they're always trying to develop against you. Uh, Yorda Grifter, three of, purely for the warning shot plus providing a body. You have pretty decent odds odds on ripping a card but I think it's a decent 4 mana 3-3 three, three that kind of gives you the warning shot. I think that's what Yorda Grifter is starting to fit into a lot of decks right now. Just having a body behind the warning shot and a bit more value in the deck. Island Navigator, big fan of this card, love it. Uh, finally get to see it shine in some lists. Uh, really cool, getting the wide bodies can be useful sometimes for A, uh, guaranteeing hitting that Nexus, and B, especially against other decks that uh, are uh, board focused, it gives you chump blockers as well as threats every now and then. You can pull some pretty funny uh, three, uh, one cost minions from that, especially Omen Hawk, if I'm being honest, that's crazy. Uh, three for Fury of the North, good for finishing, good for protecting key units, and good for taking unfavorable trades for your opponent. At burst speed, it's really, really crazy. It's kind of like repost, repost all right guys? Petty Officer, two bodies in one, uh, really good for summoning one cost allies as well, don't get me wrong. It's probably going to be used most of the time for the one cost ally, but you've got the rare niche where the keg can sometimes buff your make it rain or buff your misfortune or even just buff your warning shot for closing out games, so you never know. But it's really cool. I think the power of this card is a three attack as well and having separate bodies is very, very, very useful. Uh, Rufus Vader is going to be a three of this card's got tough, really good against Shadow Isles, and can just do for some pretty annoying uh, trades early. And almost it almost always guarantees hitting that plunder effect on turn two if you're on the attack token, attacking evens. That is, uh, Omen Hawk is going to be a three of uh, in a list like this. It's kind of like just a bad. It's it's Omen Hawk, all right, guys. It's it's seriously just a powerful card, and especially in this list, more than the Black Market Merchant one, we are literally running a lot of units, and Omen Hawk finds a lot more value. Uh, Jagged Butcher, three of, it's decent. It's a one mana two two at times, but every now and then it will become a, a one mana three three, sometimes even a one mana four four if you've buffed it from the Hawk. So that's pretty ridiculous. One mana two two is already great. 
and that's where you probably play it most of the time. But for the chance, every now and then, it will get buffed. Elixir of Iron is a one of can be very clutch in some moments, but you don't want to uh, uh, filter your deck too much with these cheap spells. So just a single copy of Elixir and Iron can sometimes make for a good highlight and throw your opponent off guard. That is the deck, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. I've got a few games here. We will just smash the ladder for a bit. So, you know, uh, leave a like. I also want to highly recommend you guys come jump over to my Twitch, say hello, give me a follow. We're doing a 12 hour stream in a few days as we hit the 100 follower mark. So that'd be really cool if you guys could come hang out, you know, ask me any questions or just ask me questions about life. Then we're just chill, we're chill. Anyway, enjoy the best Sergiorani deck with, uh, with, with arguments, I guess. I personally think for ladder right now, this is the way to go. Have a great day, goodbye. All right, so. We have got some Sejuani, Sejuani, Tempo Sejuani. That is one of the new archetypes that's become very popular. You know, the comment, the comment said, "Can you share the best Sejuani deck?" And yes, yes, I most definitely can. I'm going to be doing that right now. So this should hopefully go okay for us. The curve, <laughs> the curve is insane. First thing in aggro deck, it's a pretty straightforward game plan. Survive, maybe contest the board a bit stronger than he does, and we should be good. We'll always take this block. Every point of damage is going to be really relevant here. Unless I really want to maintain this, but it doesn't seem right. It seems correct just to save the HP. It's a very limited resource against the burn deck, especially when we're playing a deck that has a lack of healing. So I can always pass back here. He's always going to play something. He's always going to play something. I dare you not to play something. This is a bit of mind games here. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> so this current iteration doesn't actually have um what we call it we we don't actually have the black marker merchant package there's definitely another list which i'll share in the comments as well this is kind of i think this is swim's iteration of it which i kind of like i like that it steps away from the uh rng aspect of the uh, black marker merchant built for goods and focus more purely on the board i like that we always want to summon extra one drops here Oh, look at that. We're insane. We've got plenty of blockers here. We're pretty much just going to full block, right? And it doesn't matter what order we do these in, except for we have 3-1 to block the, um, the fearsome. So that's really good. Always full, full trade. He has no transfusion plays here, so it's really good for us. I think we'll go to uh, Island Navigator next turn. We want to continue to go wide against him. Looks of Iron's nice too, after hitting that Attune on the uh, little person that's pretty relevant uh this is <laughs> no, this is no good okay, i'm always gonna we're always gonna rally this turn yeah i dare you to do that i'm actually gonna use this elixir of iron just to buff it <laughs> that's crazy that's such a crazy card to have found just perfectly then because now we have a actual <laughs> unit to swing with that's crazy. Uh, we're at 15. This is a pretty healthy amount, especially when you are sitting on two cards in hand. We just want a big, big swingers. Oh, dude, I think we're just really getting gifted by the gods here. I will kind of stick to the wide plan here in case he has more units in hand. So I'm going to play Iron Navigator. Just for more blockers. So we can pretty much just full dick swing. I wonder if I want to grant vulnerable. I can slow play this turn. Maybe that's fine. Actually. This will grant vulnerable to hopefully the 3 1. But it won't be the 3 1. That's fine. Oh, it is the 3 1. So I'm going to use Nimble Poro to attack into it. Okay, so it's not sitting on any units in hand. This scout's really powerful right now. Super powerful. It could be a transfusion play here. Eh, I can deal with that. I can honestly deal with this. Because it ain't, it, it's not going on like Crimson Disciple or anything. So that's like honestly really good for us. I wonder if I just play another unit here to push more damage. I'm not greedy. My friends though. Oh, wait, is this full swing? We want to kill him. I think we pretty much stormed the board here, we like drew almost perfectly. 
I wouldn't be so surprised to see like, yeah, he's using burn against our units. He knows that we have double warning shot, actually. In one of these we drew, right? We haven't played double yet or grifter. I'm pretty sure the one on the far right would be the one that he knows that we don't have. The game's over. Just like that. A pretty insane draw for us. Those armor navigators are really clutch for going wide against him. And that second turn where we pass back to him, he always plays a unit, so we grant vulnerable to it, so that was amazing. So as I said, I personally I'm I'm aiming for this list. I think I think it's gonna be more consistent than the black market merchant one. I'm well aware of what this person's playing. Uh, this is gonna be a tough matchup for us, but make it rain does make a bit of a difference here. Make it rain really does make a difference, so we always keep that. So this is like uh, one of the lists I mucked around with climbing ladder from like diamond four to diamond one. And that is like the Noxus Ionia aggro. Quietly. And we play the Hawk. Yep. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we pass here, right? I feel like I'm passing here. But he may just make me float the mana. So we'll see if I get punished. I'm just really trying to trick my opponent out. Yeah, I think knowing how to pass is really important. Uh, make it rain does get better. It's especially relevant against the elusive units. So I need to be careful how I do this. So I don't think I'll be using my make it rain yet. It's going to be a very clutch card. It's going to be a very, very, very clutch card. So if I can, he's not running the Zed. Zed is actually like probably one of the cards I would have preferred to have seen here. I mean, sure. I don't see any reason not to play a warning shot here. Warning shot into misfortune. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Jagged Butcher here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could have waited as well. He's going to play this, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this now. He might not be sitting on Green Glade Duo. This is just to survive a little bit of damage. And uh, ironically enough, I can play Misfortune next turn. Now I wonder if, I'm, if I swing with Misfortune, it could be risky. Yeah, it's very much risky now. That was kind of like the nuts fine from him. I can actually swing with you as well. Oh, I'm choosing not to block with the, the curator. That's kind of interesting. This is going to be clutch. This the buffed up Razor Scale Hunter is going to help us out a lot. So that deck's pretty well catered for his list, for what he's trying to do. Uh, into Citrus Courier, very relevant as well. Oh, that's good. This is permanent vulnerability as well, guys. So that's always going to have vulnerable actions against it. Yep. So here comes a big turn. Big, big turn. I'm pretty sure I want to play Citrus Courier this turn. I'm always going to pull you down. We're always going to get that proc from Misfortune. This uh, this is a really good curve for us. They do run Will of Ionia. So be it. I think we get full dick swing now. I'm not mistaken. Seems correct. I'm well aware I'm losing my misfortune here, quite possibly. But this is really just a, an insane find on the Citrus Courier. He gets a unit, maybe. Sure. This is going to be a backbreaker for him. 
So we rally, which means we get to go with Razor Scale Hunter once again. I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken. Does this count as a scout? No, we can't actually do that. That's not how it works. The scout's only, only at the first turn of each action. GG. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying, like, uh, like when, as soon as I saw that they cut out the Black Market Merchant in the Pilfer Goods, it was just, it's purely board focused. <laughs> Very similar to a mid-range, like, the Marcia list. So if you're looking to try something different, but that's kind of like your, your, like, style of gameplay, this is your list. This is definitely your list. And I was well aware of what my opponent was playing. I didn't have to play around too much there. The Citrus Choreo was actually an insane find, if I'm being completely honest. Again. Um, I don't think Make It Rain... Oh, uh, Make It Rain... He's not running... That version. So, I guess Rufus Wade is good here. Make It Rain may not be as good as I might look. Because, um, they're probably playing, like, Curse Keeper and stuff, I think. If I'm not mistaken. I've heard the list similar to this before. It's like, Endure. Okay, make it rain <laughs> slightly a little bit better here. No problem. We should have kept one. I don't know. They're, they're still playing cheap minions. He's playing a, a Callista as well. So, we have an overlook. Uh, granting vulnerable to that is really good. Success. I would prefer not to get the Bark Beast uh, buffed up. This should deny everything that he has to possibly buff it. Very nice. So we're gonna have this one extra mana kind of banked up for a long time. It may even result in two mana. There's the elixir of iron. That's kind of useful. Um, board control. Board control. Keeping stuff on 2 HP is probably going to be the most useful against his deck. I'm sure. I think that's good for us. I can't play anything because you'll kill it. Yeah, I'm going to Elixir here. I think that's fine. I mean, I could have Elixir the Roof of Swader, to be honest. Could have done that. So turn four, if he's sitting like Chronicle of Ruin and stuff, it's gonna be kind of an old clunky hand for him. Let's look for the sweet one drop. That's a sweet one drop. Okay. I think I'm still going to scout once. Scout twice. Right off my dude. I feel correct. He's always getting like the good blocks. I don't want him to have any shenanigans, like glimpse for free. I want to punish him for at least attempting to use glimpse on one of his units. Still gonna swing like this. I'm not gonna swing with this. This is like really chunky minion. The tough's gonna help it against like withering whale. So if I can avoid swinging it into one of these units, I'll take that. And then hopefully we just dodge the um, on curve and doer, which I probably should be a little bit careful for, because it's going to be quite big at this point. But I didn't. I'm not exactly getting my procs off on him to get anywhere near getting Sejuani leveled up. If I'm not mistaken, that's three units down. That's six units down. Seven, eight, nine. That's a big endure already. That's a really big endure. I would. Oh, he's not actually on six mana. We're kind of fortunate enough that we're dodging that. I'm gonna go wide against him. I saw him drop the Haunted Relic, so it probably means that he's got a bit of a clunky hand. That's not a bad find if I'm being honest. We could use some value. I mean, sure. I think I'm happy with that. We'll see what we find from him. Maybe it's a playable card. Not right now. Play the Hulk. I can't really stop that, but it makes my open attack a little bit stronger. 
Pretty sure I open attack. Do I open attack? Damn, if I find something playable that's big. I always get the free scout, so it kind of gives me an option to consider making different plays. Oh, do I um play around Ruination? Because you know what I could do? I could like Fury of the North here. Hmm. I'm gonna Grifter. My friends, though. Always sitting on like Callisto or something. Ah, oh, boy. I guess I gotta go aggressive against him. I guess I have to go aggressive against him. I can't be too passive. Maybe there's no point in swinging with the hawk. For this. The winter's claw. Swing with you first. Another value of coin. Okay. I tap myself out of fear of the north manor, but uh, we'll be fine. enough so what's he retrieving back from this at the moment I think it's it wouldn't be butcher would it mm, that swing actually didn't make any sense at all and I think about it I'm never swinging with more than X amount of units then I got him to use fury of the north I think that's fine So it always pulls back Butcher. Do I block this? Do I go down to seven? <sighs> Going down to seven seems fucking petrifying. Ten seems more reasonable. I'm gonna get the action to play Razor Scale Hunter here. Big hunter. I guess, yeah, um, I was gonna make a choice here whether I play around Rural Nation or not, because if I don't, I have a good chance of winning. There's blood in the water. I can't beat into it though. There's so many cards I can't beat, and a Rural Nation's surely not gonna be one of them that I choose to try and attempt to beat. Let's see if he taps himself under. He's hovering a spell here, maybe Vengeance? Vengeance, Withering Whale? The Ruthless Raider time? I'd be happy to see Vengeance, I think. I think I'd be happy with that. In the round on him, floating that much mana. I think that's worth. I'm happy to try and attempt to just trade these off, I think. See what he does here. Maybe he like commits a Fury of the North. I can double up on my Fury of the North. Wanted Relic. Oh shit. Buys him time. Can I commit any more units here? How much mana do I have? 11. You're a ruthless raider here. See if he taps under. I kind of did tap under there.
This somehow feels wrong. Yet yeah, kind of right at the same time. I have no play against the door now if it comes down. So we can always block enough damage. I guess we just hope he's not sitting on a um. <laughs> like how close is it? Said not close enough to leveling up, unfortunately. Oh, this makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. I think this is good for us. I don't know. We'll see. He's not because she. They haven't played anything too dramatic on Callista, so I think I'm happy with this ultimately. Until Endor comes down, then I'm scared. Oh, okay. This is interesting. I don't think we're going to be blocking. Like, I don't think we're going to be not blocking here. Of course. Wait, what the hell is happening? Oh, so he blocks for uh, you. Take it up with my friends. As you absorb the damage. So there's no point in um somehow I feel like this might be better. Do I need the tough with overwhelm? You know, I might need the tough with overwhelm. I think that could be kind of the play here. He hasn't got Endor Atrocity Man this turn. And somehow I feel like they probably would have played uh, the Endor this turn. Without a doubt, in my mind. Being this far away from leveling up Sejuani, you'd have to be insane not to play Endor. Unless you weren't sitting on Atrocity and you wanted to go wider. So I guess I just play out my hand here. I don't think the make, like the make it rain might be relevant in terms of damage if I have to count it up. For now, I can play Grenadier. Shit, do I play the Make It Rain? It might be correct. It might be the damage that we need. Maybe the damage that we need. Some guarantee it hits face, most likely. What's scary is if, um,. Endure comes down. He doesn't have Endure in hand. That's crazy for us right now. <clears throat> really crazy for us. I don't think we're scouting this turn. Who's gonna get in my way? The winter's claw. We are not scouting this turn. We're just going in. The scout would be a misplay, 100%. So if I'm not guaranteeing lethal, these few of the North should. Hey, incredible dude, this deck is insane. Best Sejuani deck, we'll see dude. We'll see. Ah, strong deck. There you go, my man. This is a deck I would recommend at the moment. If you if you if you have a if you have a fucking boner for Black Market Merchant, I'll share another list there as well. Uh, I'll share that with and without Black Market Merchant, but I highly recommend trying out the without one. Relying on no RNG, but your pure board state. Thank you guys. See you soon.